I hope some of you have watched the movie Amazonia. The film was launched in 2013 and was directed by a French director. Amazonia fills a space halfway in between a walk of friction and a wildlife documentary. The protagonist of the movie is Sai, a Capturian monkey born and raised in captivity. The movie takes a turn when this monkey finds himself alone and lost in the wilderness of Amazon jungle after a plane crash. The Sai is now exposed to a new set of challenges. The freedom, the impenetrable green and the ferocious predators like crocodiles, boas, jaguars, snakes, etc. are all around himself. Sai's only chance of survival is to seek out his own kind and join the Capturian community. The movie displays an extraordinary journey into the heart of a dark, dense forest, a region that very few people have explored. It's a perfect family movie, so if you haven't watched it, I recommend you to watch it as soon as possible. Let us quickly take a tour of the place on which the movie Amazonia is based. This place, as we can see, is completely covered with trees and it rains here almost every day. Thus, this place is hot and humid. Now here, one can find more species of plants and animals than anywhere else in the world. Well, let me tell you that we have arrived at a rainforest. Now, where on the earth can you find rainforest? Well, this world map shows the location of rainforest. Now, from this map, we can see that the rainforests are located on both the sides of the equator. Particularly, these rainforests extend from 10 degree north to 10 degree south latitudes. Well, we can see that the rainforest is mainly located in the equatorial region and thus these rainforests are also known as equatorial rainforest. So in this world map, the regions marked in green represent the equatorial rainforest. Now, as we can see here, these rainforests are located in the three continents, namely South America, Africa and Asia. Now, the equatorial rainforests are mainly located in the northern part of South America. And the world's largest river, that is the Amazon River, drains this region. And therefore, the equatorial rainforest of South America is also known as Amazon rainforest. Now, coming to Africa, as we can see here, the equatorial rainforest is mainly located in the eastern part of Central Africa. Now, here, the rainforest has developed along the banks of River Congo and therefore, the equatorial rainforest of Central Africa is known as Congo rainforest. In Asia, the equatorial rainforest is spread across several island countries of Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore and even Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, since the equatorial rainforest is mainly located in the southeastern part of Asia, therefore, collectively, these equatorial rainforests of Asia is known as Southeast Asian Rainforest. So, as I have mentioned earlier, this map illustrates the location of equatorial rainforest in the world. Now, as we can see here, the equatorial rainforest lies very close to the equator and it is present in three major continents, that is South America, Africa and Asia. Now, can you tell me, out of these three rainforests, which of them is the largest? Well, among these three rainforests, the Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world. It covers an approximate area of 6 million square kilometers. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, the Amazon rainforest is drained by Amazon River. So, this is the picture of Amazon rainforest and this meander represents the Amazon river. 
and this amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world so till now we have discussed in details about the location of equatorial rainforest now as the term suggests rain forest we can very well understand that rainfall plays an important role in the flourishment and development of these rainforest so now we shall look into details about the rainfall and other climatic conditions prevailing in this region now before we proceed with our lesson let us try to answer this question identify the largest rainforest in the world is it the amazon rainforest congo rainforest sundarbans or the valdivian temperate rainforest well the correct answer is amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world in fact this amazon rainforest is also known as the lungs of our mother earth we shall now discuss in details about the climatic conditions of equatorial rainforest now as i've mentioned earlier the equatorial rainforest is located in the equatorial region now we know that the equatorial region receives direct rays of the sun this is to say that the sun rays are always perpendicular at or near the equator not only the sun's rays are perpendicular but also the heat of the sun's rays is very intense as the sun's rays are concentrated over a small region the intense heat of the sun heats up the equatorial region more as a result the equatorial rainforest experience a uniformly high temperature throughout the year that is round the year the temperature of equatorial rainforest is very high so we understood that the temperature of equatorial rainforest is very high let us now discuss about the rainfall pattern experienced by these rainforests this map shows the worldwide distribution of rainfall here the regions marked in blue are the regions of heavy rainfall or high rainfall that is these regions receives an annual rainfall of more than 200 cm again the regions marked in green are the regions of mild or moderate rainfall whereas the regions marked in peach color are the regions of low rainfall while the regions marked in yellow are the regions of scanty rainfall now from this map we can very well understand that the equatorial belt or the equatorial region are the regions of heavy rainfall now since the equatorial rainforest is present in the equatorial region so we can also say that the equatorial rainforest receives heavy rainfall throughout the year in fact the annual rate of precipitation or annual rainfall of this region ranges from 150 to 350 cm Now as i have mentioned earlier the term rainforest itself implies that rainfall plays an important role in the development or flourishment of these rainforest now this high amount of rainfall is also sometimes accompanied by thunder and lightning in fact you will be surprised to know that there is no particular month or not a single day when it does not rain in this region thus we can say that the equatorial rainforest receives high amount of rainfall throughout the year In fact the equatorial rainforest receives rain every day at around 4 o'clock and therefore due to this reason the rainfall is also known as 4 o'clock shower thus it can be said that equatorial rainforest experience 4 o'clock shower now 4 o'clock shower is a type of convectional rainfall let us now understand the meaning of convectional rainfall Convectional rainfall occurs when the earth's surface gets heated up due to intense heat of the sun. 
The hot ground also heats up the air lying above it. The warm air rises and the cold air sinks down. This eventually leads to the formation of convectional currents. Now, the surface water also heats up and evaporates as water vapor due to intense heat of the sun. The water vapor eventually mixes with air particles and condenses to form clouds. The clouds eventually become heavier due to further accumulation of water droplets and they shade as rainfall. This rainfall thus form due to convectional currents that is rising of warm air and sinking of cold air is known as convectional rainfall. Now I mentioned that 4 o'clock shower is a type of convectional rainfall which occurs every day at 4 o'clock. This is because during daytime the earth's surface receives heat from the sun and by the time of afternoon the formation of cloud is over and the clouds thus form eventually shade rainfall in the afternoon and therefore we equatorial region experiences rainfall every day at 4 o'clock. Now this chart summarizes the temperature and precipitation pattern of equatorial rainforest. Now as we have discussed earlier, the equatorial rainforest have uniformly high temperature throughout the year. In this chart, we can see that the average temperature of the equatorial rainforest is very high and it ranges between 30 to 35 degree Celsius. Also, the variation between day and night temperature is usually very low. That is, the diurnal range of temperature is usually very low. Now, I hope you know the meaning of diurnal range of temperature. Diurnal range of temperature refers to the difference between day and night temperature. Now, let me calculate for you the diurnal range of temperature. Well, the range of temperature as we know is the difference between maximum and minimum temperature. Now, we know the temperatures are usually maximum during daytime. So, the diurnal range of temperature is a difference between day and night temperatures. Now, if we consider this case, then the maximum temperature during daytime is 32 degrees Celsius, whereas the minimum temperature of the night is 27 degrees Celsius. So, the diurnal range of temperature in this case is 32 minus 27, which is 5 degree Celsius. Now, this 5 degree Celsius is the diurnal range of temperature for a particular day. Now, this range of temperature as we can see here is uniform throughout the year. Now, coming to precipitation, we know that the equatorial regions receive high rainfall throughout the year. Now, if we consider the case of a particular day, by the time of afternoon, the sky become overcast with clouds. And by the time of evening, that is around 4 o'clock, there is heavy downpour. Now, if we consider the case of a particular day in the equatorial rainforest, then during daytime, there is a rapid increase in temperature. By the time of afternoon, the sky become overcast with clouds. And by the time of evening, there is a heavy downpour the nights are pleasant. Now, this is not just a story of one day, but such conditions prevails round the year. Also, in this chart, we can see that there is no winter season in the equatorial region. And in fact, there is no month when it does not rain. In fact, the equatorial regions enjoy one single summer season, which is warm and wet. So, as I have mentioned just now, the equatorial rainforest enjoy hot and wet climate, that is high temperature and heavy rainfall throughout the year. In fact, there is one particular summer season in equatorial rainforest which is warm and wet. Now, this warm and wet climate of this biome plays an important role in the type of vegetation found in this region. Well, we will discuss about the type of vegetation of equatorial rainforest in our next lesson. So, in today's lesson, we discussed in details about the location of equatorial rainforest.
I mentioned that equatorial rainforest is located across both the sides of equator. Particularly, it is located between 10 degree north to 10 degree south latitudes. Then I mentioned that Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world. Then we also discussed about the climate of equatorial rainforest which is hot and wet. In our next lesson as I have mentioned just now we will discuss about the vegetation of this biome. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now